So today we have with us Eric Hayes. He's a junior in computer science and started his own multimedia company when he was in high school. So thank you so much for being here with us today. Thanks for um, having me. We just want to start with some background. So tell us a little bit about yourself, where are you from, and what are you up to right now? I am originally from a small town called Aberdeen in Scotland, but I've uh, lived in Canada since I was about seven years old. So I've um, uh, been there ever since. And in high school, I was thinking about what I wanted to do for college and in the future, and I've ended up applying to the States, and uh, here I am now. So tell me, what are you passionate about? Like, what gets you out of bed in the morning? I'm really passionate about stories and stories that get me excited about the world, and especially ones that um, give me a sense that the world is a much larger, more mysterious place than... Um, simply myself. I think it's a great way to open your eyes to kind of the possibilities of the world. And um, I think that's one of the reasons I'm so obsessed with filmmaking. Tell me more about your filmmaking experience. Yeah, so I've, I've always been drawing and doing visual arts since I was a, a, quite a young child, but um, I first started moving into animation actually, because when you're an 11 year old kid and you want to make your big masterpieces really you, you do it the only way you can which is on a smaller scale with stop-motion characters and you've got your small camera and lights and it was a, it was a lot of fun so I I got into that and started doing that pretty seriously for quite a long time and I kind of fell in love with animation and the the way that to me even to this day still it's it's really one of the closest things I've ever experienced to magic where you can take completely inanimate objects and actually um, make them greater than the sum of their parts by bringing them to life or telling a story. So I started doing animation and then uh, as time went on I sought more and more to be collaborating with other people and I've um, still got a love for animation but I've shifted more into doing live action stuff and I've been trying to uh, yeah tell the most interesting and compelling stories I can. So what is it about the, the stories or the filmmaking process that really attracts you to it? And how have you um, explored that passion further during your time in high school and in college? One thing that actually presented some challenges to me is that I'm really interested in science and technology, but I'm also really interested in storytelling and the more artistic side. And I think part of the reason I fell in love with filmmaking is because it, it really satisfies both of those things. There's a huge engineering technical component to making things possible. And yet there's also this larger, exciting, creative aspect as well. And that's what I loved about it, but it also made it tricky in that knowing where to go and what the steps are to um, improve yourself and... Um, for instance, what you're going to major in in college even. That's something that doesn't actually come as naturally, at least it didn't to me, and I wasn't sure which way I should take it and which direction. So um, once I ended up here at Princeton, I was actually seriously thinking about maybe doing more of the technical stuff academically versus more of the creative stuff on my own time. And, and thankfully, um, liberal arts gives you that opportunity to explore a bit of both, and that's part of the reason I was so attracted to coming to the U.S. in the first place. But Definitely, it's, it's always a bit of a challenge and a juggling act, but I feel like I've had the chance to really delve into both of those things while I've been here. And you were going to be a physics major, right? I was, yeah. I, I considered being a physics major, and I think not really because I wanted to be a physicist, per se, but I really liked physics in high school. It's something I always was interested in, and I felt like it was a really great tool to have in your tool belt in terms of the quantitative and analytical skills it brings, and the first principles way of breaking down problems and engineering problems and um, yeah I enjoyed it but I think I, I realized that um, rather than putting off and putting off that that more hands-on engineering aspect I think I was getting I was feeling like I wanted to tackle that sooner so I discovered computer science at, at Princeton that's not something I'd ever had the opportunity to have exposure to before university um, but I really took I took my first course here and thought what have I been missing out on my whole life and uh, have jumped straight into that. So talk to me a little bit more about how you combine what you talked about earlier, the artist part of you and the scientist part of you. Um, I know you shot a movie that kind of combined those two things last year, which I thought was really cool. So explain to me what 
how you um, combine those two things and explore both passions simultaneously. Yeah, well, it, it, it can be a challenge sometimes because I think sometimes um, the world we're in can make you feel like you really should be doing one or the other. And it, it can, you really have to go out of your way sometimes to do both. That said, I do feel like there's a very supportive community on both sides here, both on the artistic front and also in terms of um, classes and the academic side of the other, thing, the other things I'm doing. Um, but the, yeah, the film I made last year was, was trying to tackle both of those things, both in terms of the production of the film, but also in terms of the story of the film. I wanted to um, explore some real science ideas, but in a way that's much more approachable and that feels less like a science fair project and is more a story that people can actually get immersed in. And um, I think part of it for me has always just been thinking about what are your strengths of being honest with yourself and then um, when you figured out what it is that you would like to do or what it is that you think you're good at, um, not being afraid to give yourself the credit to actually pursue those things because it's not easy and it, it won't, it definitely won't always be easy, but um, I think sometimes people sell themselves a little short actually. What do you mean by sell themselves a little short? If you are really excited about something and even if maybe you aren't great at it immediately, and most people aren't, um, I think giving yourself the almost the permission to pursue those things and give yourself the permission to, to stumble as you, as you get better and better at it, but to continue to work towards what it is that it r is really important to you or what you really would like to be good at. Very cool. Um, so now talk to me a little bit about your college admissions process. Right. Um, so what was it like for you? What do you wish you had known when you were a uh, senior in high school? Um, and what advice would you have for people currently going through that process? So when I was in high school in Canada, I, um, I had almost put off thinking about university application as much as I could because I, like I said, I was interested in these different things and I wasn't sure what the best move was in terms of what I should be pursuing and it was difficult for me to really pinpoint what that was that I should, I should look into in the immediate future. And on top of that, I went to quite a small high school in Canada and there were not very many people who applied to the US. And a lot of my counselors and people at my school didn't have much experience with that. And so really, I was more or less on my own. So it definitely was a, a, a challenge just simply figuring out what all the components that were required. And I had to figure out SATs and essays and all these other components which weren't part of the application process for Canada, but things that I had to figure out nonetheless. So that was um, a little daunting, actually, and I really, I really appreciate the challenge that, and the stress that can be applying to university because there's a lot involved. And um, although I got to it later in the game, I know a lot of people are thinking about it in their junior year, maybe even their sophomore year, early in high school. It's something that's on your mind. So I think one of the things that I slowly figured out as I was going through it, but that I wish someone had told me when I was going through it was one of the best things to do when you're applying is really focus on your strengths and what actually you're passionate about and what makes you unique or different or good at what you do. Because sometimes there's this sense that you should be an all-rounder and you should be good at everything across the board. And while it's nice to have lots of different um, aspects to what you do and what you're interested in, I think it's always your best bet to stick and focus on what you're best at and what you're passionate about because I think people make the mistake sometimes of trying to work their application or work themselves into some kind of mold which is not fooling anyone and won't be satisfying for you and doesn't help anything. So I think it really, um, uh, focusing on your strengths, focusing on what you're passionate about and trying to make sure that part stands out in your application I think is, is definitely the right move. And you started pretty late, right? Thinking about applying I did, to US yeah, colleges. I did. Around. I was, I was, I applied to a few Canadian universities in in grade twelve, and I, the U.S. had been on my mind, but really, I didn't seriously start 
going about the, the U.S. application process until actually after I graduated. So I'd already finished grade 12 when I, and it was during a year off that I took that I, I decided it was time to really look into this seriously and, and take a good stab at it. So that's reassuring, right? We don't have to plan it's never like too late. three yeah. years. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell me more about your gap year. What made you decide to take it? Are you glad that you took it? And what do you do with that time? I think for me, a gap year made a lot of sense, and I'm really happy I did take it. Partly because of the fact I didn't quite have a university option lined up for me that I felt like I was really, really excited about. There are some, some great universities in Canada, but I just, the programs that I was applying to, I, I didn't feel, I felt like I was applying to them because in some sense they sort of seemed like something someone should do rather than something I think I would actually embrace and make the most out of. So I wasn't too excited by what I had been looking into um, up until that point. And on top of that, I had kept myself really, really busy during my grade 12 year. And I think a lot of people now especially do in high school. And it's great to keep yourself busy and doing lots of things, but if you're not careful, when you're always going through the grind and taking it day by day, you can lose that sense of perspective a little bit and actually thinking about the things that you want to work towards and whatnot. So um, taking a year off and to do some more film work with the, the business I'd started and um, going through the application process but also stepping away from the the craziness that was my grade 12 year I think did me a lot of good and helped me yeah gain a lot of perspective and really think about what it is that I wanted to do yeah so say I, I'm a high school student and mm -hmm. I've realized you know I think I'm really interested in filmmaking or in physics or in something else how then should I go about making a plan and figuring out a to find out more and learn more and be kind of really go as far with that as I can the, the finding out more part of that is a really big part and important part. Um, I think there are a lot of people who um, do end up at some point in their university career shifting their focus or maybe even like myself changing majors and I think it's great if you can to give yourself as much exposure as possible. Whatever that means and it can be different for different programs but I think even something as simple as reaching out to people who've done similar things or in the case of um, if there's, say, a specific career you think you might be interested in, figuring out what the steps that were taken to work towards that, what people pursued, what they did or didn't like, and why is a big part of it. I think that's uh, an, an important thing, just to make sure you, you have a, as good a sense as possible for what you're looking into and what you're applying for. And then once you have decided it's something you do really want to do, I think a lot of it is just giving, getting yourself to have the discipline to really focus on what are the steps that are needed, break it down into the small manageable tasks, because the truth is even the biggest, most daunting things, if you break it down and break it down and break it down, you can break it down into very manageable sizes. The key is just to make sure once you do that, you have the discipline and you put in the hard work to make sure you stick to it. So almost as a case study, let's talk about how you did this for your movie. Okay. So what were the, like, when did the idea start? And then what did you start to do to make, you know, to what, like for me, if I were like to shoot a full length movie, what to me would seem like a, a really daunting task to actually get to that point where you could actually have done it. Yeah, so part of the deal I made with myself when I opted to come here rather than say going to film school or doing something that's more conventionally related to film, I said if I'm going to go to Princeton, which I was very, very excited to do, um, part of it, the deal though, is I have to make an ambitious project while I'm there. I think that's something that's important to me. And at the time, when I was a physics major, because associated with that program is independent work and other things that can keep you busier and busier as time goes on, it seemed like sophomore year was the right time to do it. Because uh, my, my plan before I started university was freshman year, you're still getting to know the ropes, you're still meeting people, figuring things out. Maybe sophomore year would be a better time to tackle something like that, once you're a little bit more established. So that was how it started. And then, over the course of my freshman year and leading into the summer, I had these different ideas floating around for stories I wanted to explore. And the uncertainty that um, is always floating around your head, whether it's applying to college or looking forward into the future and um, into jobs and that sort of thing, uh, was a topic I felt like was really relevant to me at the time. And on top of that, there were these really interesting um, thought experiment, uh, it, it's a time travel thought experiment essentially, with some, some real physics ideas embedded in there. And that was an idea I really wanted to have some fun exploring. 
So once I started from there, I set myself out a very rough plan in terms of, okay, I'm going to work on the script over the course of the summer, and I'm just going to focus on that part. And then once I have a working draft, then I'm going to start reaching out to places on campus that might be willing to give us some funding, people who might be interested in participating, and also getting other crew members involved so it doesn't all just, the weight doesn't all just fall on your own shoulders. So um, I did that over the summer and it was always evolving. I think I went through about 20 drafts of the script before I was satisfied with what I was working with. So that had to, um, that was quite a, a long process, but I think an important one. And then once I was back on campus and the busyness of student life kicked in, it was really just a task of taking it bit by bit, breaking everything down into what are we going to shoot and when and what's going to be required for that. Who am I going to need to get in touch with to make that possible? If we're going to be renting equipment, which we did, where are we going to get it from? How are we going to get it back? What's the timeline going to be like? And the truth is with any ambitious project, although you can break it down into small pieces, the reality is that plan is always going to be evolving and changing over time. And I would say to anyone who wants to, to has a very big ambitious plan, I think you have to always be prepared to um, change it as you go along because inevitably you're going to have to. But we took it day by day and the schedule and the plan evolved as we went along, but sooner or later, sooner or later we had shot everything we needed to shoot and then it was really just um, about going through the logistical challenge of um, setting aside the time and working through everything we had and then eventually releasing the film. Very cool. So what are some challenges or setbacks that you faced in your life? Um, and, and how did you get out of it and what did you learn from it? Well, to start off with, just one of the biggest challenges was um, in my grade 12 year, I was keeping myself very busy with schoolwork and I was doing um, these film related things as well. And I was also a, a quite a busy Taekwondo athlete. And right in the midst of all this, um, as the, the year was getting into the thick of things, my my mom actually got pretty sick, and that was something that took quite a heavy toll on myself and the family, and um, it, it definitely makes you feel like you're struggling between your different responsibilities and what should you be focusing on, because um, in some sense, you, you, know, you really want to be doing the best you can at everything you're doing, you want to avoid making compromises, and yet, obviously, you want to be there for your family, you want to make sure you're helping out where you can, and that was definitely a, a constant ongoing struggle of figuring out um, how can I help out and where should I be putting my time and am I around enough or am I always off doing other things and that was something that was definitely um, uh, uh, a constant struggle and I think part of it trying to to work with that was just making sure you're really trying to give everything your all and be as communicative as possible but that was a that was definitely one of the biggest challenges of my grade 12 year on top of that, on a kind of different note, um, I was a, I, I, I'm a Taekwondo athlete and I, I've always loved martial arts and it's something that was quite important to me. And I started competing quite early into when I was training and I was lucky enough to go to some pretty big um, competitions. And comp competing was always something that interested me, but I definitely felt like once I started getting to the big competitions, where I was against some really strong fighters, many of whom would uh, uh, sort of sweep the floor with me. I really started feeling like, wow, I don't know if I'm cut out for this A, B, um, I don't even know if this is what I really want out of it. Because I felt like I loved the training and I loved the different aspects of doing it, but when it actually came time to being in the ring with the adrenaline, all of a sudden, um, the, the person that I s almost always am, which is the, the the stereotypical go-getter and wanting to make the most of everything, I felt like that part of me would shut down and I would not perform my best. And that was really something I, I started struggling with where I felt like I almost hit the ceiling in terms of I was competing at a high level, but I just couldn't quite push past that. And um, I think what I really came to terms with was I love Taekwondo and I still do it, but the that certain competition aspect of it I realized wasn't why I was doing it. That's not what interested me. And although I definitely had some some great experiences doing it, um, competing at a high level just wasn't something that I aspired to. At least not for not for that sport. And it it was quite difficult, like coming to terms with that and accepting that that's not wasn't for me or wasn't what I was interested in. But 
um, once I did, I think I was, I was much happier because I could really, um, I could enjoy the training, I can still enjoy the, the sparring and the different aspects, but without having to be stressing about competition the same way. Very cool. Uh, my last question for you today is what values or principles that you choose to live by? The most important values and principles to me are, um, first and foremost, I think carrying yourself with humility is important because there are always people who are more successful, more established, more wise, more experienced, and I think you have a lot to learn from those people. And not only is it polite, but I think being, being humble is important because it gives you a way to put yourself in a frame of mind where you're actually listening and you're actually engaging and you're getting the most out of the people and things around you. And I think that's a really important part of it. And I think um, being a good listener is something that's actually often really undervalued. So I think that's very important to me. I also think um, maintaining a strong work ethic is really important. I, I have one of my um, great family friends and Taekwondo coaches used to always say that um, hard work will trump uh, talent every time. And I think there's a lot of truth in that, which is um, if you're disciplined about what you do and you uh, aren't afraid to work hard towards it and you can continue that, I think you can give yourself a, a real edge and really get the most out of what you're doing. And I think um, people who and I experienced this a lot in high school. People who have, um, you know, who are very intelligent or maybe have things come much more naturally to them, they can sometimes run the risk of getting complacent and relaxing in a way that they're not putting in a, a full effort and they're not really um, pushing themselves to be better than they are. And I think, um, unfortunately, I think it, it ended up catching up with those people because I think if you really want to go further and do other things and make the most of what you have, you really do have to... Um, uh, embrace the hard work and um, make the most out of it. Thank you so much for coming and speaking with us today. Oh, thanks for having me.